Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are back with our first look at a custom RX 7900 XTX graphics card. In for review today is the Sapphire Nitro Plus model, featuring a 420 watt power limit, a boost clock of 2680 MHz, and I must say, a pretty jaw dropping design. Today then, we're going to find out exactly how well this card stacks up against AMD's reference design, looking at thermals, gaming, overclocking, and more. So, without further ado, let's dive in. Starting with a look at the design of the card then, I do have to give Sapphire big credit here. This is without doubt one of the best looking graphics cards that I can remember. Sapphire has opted for a grey shroud that curves beautifully around both ends of the card before meeting the grey metal backplate on top. Although made from plastic, the shroud does feel pretty rigid in the hand, perhaps in part thanks to the internal aluminium magnesium alloy that Sapphire claims is designed to improve structural stiffness. A long RGB diffuser can also be found on either side of the shroud and this is a new design feature for the Nitro Plus. I have to say that the RGB is very well done, the light itself is very evenly diffused with no hot spots but it doesn't look overly gaudy either. Sapphire does also include a 5V ARGB header on the card itself so you can synchronize the lighting with your motherboard, though do note that for this to work you need to download the Trick software and set the LED setting to external source. A 4-pin PWM fan header is even placed next to the ARGB connection to allow a chassis fan to be controlled based on the GPU's own fan curve. Speaking of the fans, we obviously get three here, and these use Sapphire's angular velocity fan blade design, with the company claiming up to 19% more airflow compared to the previous generation. Each fan measures approximately 98mm across, and they continue to feature Sapphire's quick connect feature, so they can be individually removed after taking out just a single screw per fan. We can't get away from the fact that this is a big graphics card though, much bigger than AMD's reference design. The Nitro Plus measures in at 320 by 135.8 by 71.6 millimeters, so it's pretty long and over three and a half slots thick, making it both longer and wider than the RTX 4090 Founders Edition. It also weighs in at just under 1.94 kilos. Flipping the card over then, we can note the grey metal backplate, which perfectly matches the colour of the shroud. The backplate itself doesn't quite extend to the entire length of the card, instead leaving a small gap for airflow between the end of the backplate and the internal metal frame that wraps around the end of the card. We can also see that a dual bio switch is placed on the back of the card as well, and this is very close to the I.O. bracket. Technically, this is a three-way switch, as the setting furthest from the I.O. bracket engages the primary BIOS, the secondary BIOS is in the middle, and on the furthest left setting, Sapphire includes a software switch option, and this simply lets you change between the two BIOS modes from within the Trick software, so there's no need to physically move that switch. For the BIOS modes themselves, BIOS 1 has a 420 watt total board power and it has a 2680 MHz boost clock, while BIOS 2, which is the secondary BIOS, that has a lower 350 watt total board power and a boost clock of 2500 MHz. We can also note triple 8 pin PCIe power connectors, so that's an extra 8 pin compared to reference while Sapphire also includes two HDMI 2.1 and two DisplayPort 1.4 video outputs. In terms of disassembly then, we'll start off by taking a look at the PCB. Here, Sapphire has opted for a 17-phase VRM for the GPU, and we can see a 3-phase VRM for the memory. 70-amp monolithic power systems MP87997 MOSFETs are used across the board, with the GPU VRM controlled by a monolithic MP2857 and a monolithic MP2856 controller is used for the memory VRM. 
As for the cooler then, Sapphire has brought back Vapor X for the Nitro Plus, meaning a copper vapor chamber is used to directly contact the GPU and memory modules, while seven heat pipes draw heat out into the Finstack. That aluminium magnesium frame we already mentioned does also serve a dual purpose, as it does contact the VRM to provide extra cooling via some thermal pads. Sapphire also uses thermal pads on the underside of the backplate, though they are quite thick at approximately 4mm, so I'm not sure how much thermal transfer there will be, but I guess it's better than nothing. That is it for our look at the card though, so it's time to move on to testing. For this, we are of course using our regular GPU test system for 2022, which is powered by MSI. This is based on Intel's i9-12900K CPU, paired with the MSI MEG Z690 Unified motherboard and 32GB of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory. All testing was also done using the MSI MBG321 URQD 4K monitor. Kicking off with thermal performance then, as this is the first AIB card we've tested, we've not got any other comparison points apart from the AMD reference design, but we can see that the Nitro Plus BIOS 1 mode does offer similar thermal performance to the MBA design. It is important to note, however, that these are out-of-the-box thermal results, so noise levels are not taken into account. BIOS 2, meanwhile, runs about 5 degrees cooler than BIOS 1 as a result of its lower power limit. These thermal results look even better when we do take noise levels into account. The Nitro Plus operates at just 35 decibels, so that's a healthy 6 decibel reduction compared to AMD's reference card. Interestingly, noise levels are about the same between BIOS 1 and BIOS 2, with both modes peaking at 36% fan speed, or around 1480 RPM in our testing. I did, however, unfortunately notice some coil whine during my testing. It's not the worst I've ever heard, but take a listen for yourself with this quick sound test. As for noise normalized thermals, to produce 40 decibels of noise, we had to increase fan speed to 48%, or about 1950 RPM. This saw the Nitro Plus run comfortably cooler than the AMD reference design, offering a 7 degree reduction in terms of GPU thermals, but a 12 degree reduction when looking at the hotspot. This is also while operating at a higher power limit as well, as noise normalized thermals don't take power into account, making the overall design even more impressive. That's because Sapphire has actually pumped up the power significantly with the Nitro Plus, as we saw the card drawing 440 watts in our testing. That does, however, mean that overall efficiency of the card is significantly reduced, with performance per watt down by 17% compared to the reference card in Cyberpunk 2077, but let's take a look at what that means in terms of the clock speed headroom. As it turns out, the extra power budget afforded to the Nitro Plus directly translate into significantly raised clock speeds. BIOS 1 averaged 2751 MHz over our 30 minute stress test, making it about 170 MHz faster than the reference design. Now, BIOS 2 does run noticeably slower as a result of its reduced power limit, but even then, overall performance closely matches AMD's reference card. Despite that factory overclock though, our game benchmarks only show limited gains for the Nitro Plus when compared to AMD's reference design. We saw at most a 4% boost to frame rates in Horizon Zero Dawn, but typically the figure was just 2%, as shown in Cyberpunk 2077 and Resident Evil Village. As ever, the factory overclock alone is not a real reason to buy one card over the other, as the differences are very minor. Finishing with a look at overclocking then, if you've already seen our launch day review of the 7900 XTX, you will know that we had very limited success here. So 
it was an area where I wanted to spend a bit more time with the Nitro Plus. One key change I made was adjusting the voltage slider, and undervolting really does help with this GPU. I lowered this by 60 millivolts down from 1150 to 1090 millivolts, while setting a maximum GPU clock of 3050 megahertz. The memory clock was adjusted to 2720 megahertz, with the power limit maximized at plus 15%. Now, this overclock did actually net relatively decent gains in our testing, far better than what we saw on launch day, with improvements coming in around 8% above the Nitro Plus running its default settings. In some cases, the 7900 XTX was not too far off the RTX 4090, though, of course, it never fully caught up. The downside to pushing a custom card like this to its limit is that power draw did increase significantly. We measured just under 490 watts power draw in Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K, though, as you can see here, we even exceeded 510 watts in Resident Evil Village. Considering this 7900 XTX was still always slower than a stock RTX 4090, that is a heck of a lot of juice. After all of that then, I think it's fair to say the Sapphire Nitro Plus is one of the best AMD based graphics cards that I have reviewed over the last few years. For starters, I really think that Sapphire has nailed the design. For me, the grey colour looks fantastic and the subtle curves and RGB light bar really adds a level of sophistication. The cooler also performs very well and granted, we can't say how much better or worse it is than any other custom card as this is our first AIB review, it still managed to be 7 degrees cooler than AMD's reference design while also drawing over 80 watts more power, so that is pretty impressive. There's also a solid dual BIOS implementation, reasonable overclocking headroom once you bring undervolting into play, and it is a very quiet graphics card, bar just a touch of coil wine that was present on my sample. The one thing giving me cause for concern then is, of course, going to be pricing. While it is currently out of stock here in the UK, it launched at £1,300, making it actually £100 more expensive than some RTX 4080s right now in the UK. I have to say this was a worry for me when the 7900 XTX first came out. For me, this GPU absolutely has to be cheaper than the RTX 4080 to offer any meaningful value. As good as Sapphire's design is, if you can get a 4080 offering similar overall performance, but with DLSS and superior ray tracing, for £100 less, then, well, I just think the 7900 XTX becomes very hard to justify. To be clear, Sapphire's custom Nitro Plus design is absolutely fantastic, but for me, the 7900 XTX just cannot demand a price premium over the RTX 4080, as just doesn't make sense. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this review, so if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts on this card down in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe if you haven't already, and why not come carry on the conversation in our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While you're there, you can also find a link to our brand new merch store, where you can see a couple cool designs on screen now. And lastly, if you're feeling particularly generous, you could also consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.